my number one is like 100 the most exclusive game for ps3 which is metal gear solid 4 uh just for how like it is still weird to me that they i don't think they ever that game has not left that console in any way shape or form well maybe. playstation now right. you can you can stream yeah I, you, you have to run it through that like the ps3 counts. emulator right like yeah. i don't know there's no native version out of that game outside of like it right. running on ps3 architecture which is strange but yeah i i remember liking Metal Gear Solid 4 a lot when it came out of just like, wow, this is a wild experience. And I, I think that's the reason I bought a PS3. Oh, was wow. Because I think I, like a, a few months before that, I played through the rest of the Metal Gear Solid games uh, and was like, oh, OK, because I'd heard a lot about like, oh, people really like Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, and so I played through, you know, like, well, I want to play through the rest of the series just in case. And so it just happened that at the end, after I beat Metal Gear Solid 3, I had like the money to buy PS3 and Metal Gear Solid 4. That's perfect. Um, and I want to say I might have even gotten Metal Gear Solid 4 before I had a PS3. Mm. I think I might have gotten bought that collector's edition, uh, which was, I think, a hundred dollars and then waited a couple months and then got a PS3. Uh, but and then so I, I played it. I played through it. I really loved it. I, I think it. I think it was probably my favorite game of 2008. Um, but then I remember like, uh, as it went on, it's like, oh, it's just like, it's too cinematic. It's too short or whatever. Like, it's not like, it's not as in depth as, it's not as systemic as a lot of other games or whatever, even Metal Gear. But I think now looking back on it, it's such a weird object of just like, <laughs> yes. I cannot believe how many things they let Kojima get away with, with this game. It really is one of the strangest games ever made. And I love it. Like I had a similar situation with you where I bought the game before I had my PS3 because I couldn't afford the PS3 yet, but uh, best friend Ronnie had one. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to buy the game. And then because I'm buying your copy of the game that will eventually give you, you should let me borrow your PS3. So I got to play it like day one. And it was so exciting to like have this new console I didn't even own yet. I was just borrowing from a friend and blast through it. But it is striking. Even like going back to the original reveal trailer, it was at that E3 2006. So I watched it again. It is just like an avalanche of weird that I completely forgot about where this reveal trailer, it's like, you know, very Black Hawk Down, obviously the the Act One. It's really focusing on, and it's is this is this the finally a policy switch one? Um, no, I don't think okay. so because there was kind we'll, of like we'll a weird yeah. teaser later. Yeah, but so for this one, it's you know they show the geckos early on, so you're seeing Metal Gear Rex heads, and then with weird legs, and they're pooping in the streets, and then it's just hey, we have Meryl, we have liquid ocelot we have otacon coming back showing like all your friends are coming back and we have solid snake coming back and then the end of the trailer is snake just putting a fucking gun in his mouth and then it's just the bullet like the sound of the gunshot it blows my mind that in their big triumphant return of like solid snakes back everybody they end the reveal trailer with him blowing his brains out he's back to blow his brains out <laughs> it's insane <laughs> yeah if, i feel like if they had like actually gone through with that decision and actually had that be the ending i think it would have been one of the greatest games ever made and just like oh my God. <laughs> which is effectively like what ends up happening like you like that character does not exist beyond that game like it, it right they haven't made a sequel revenge he's not in revengeance at all like in in high i'm sure you know like at the time they were like we can't kill a solid snake we're gonna make more games and it turns out they never really did make more solid snake games yeah um yeah uh you know metal gear solid 6 will return we'll have <laughs> older snake coming back now he has two know, guns in his mouth. oldest oldest snake elder snake uh <laughs> but yeah like the the entire like 18 endings that that game has like the the how each chapter i think is like really distinct in yes. terms of w what kind of gameplay or even like aesthetic things it's going for um yeah it, it's such a strange game to play it, it it is almost less of a game and more like that kind of interactive movie that everyone wants to talk about in terms of like this is just this is just going for one scene after another and it's just such a strange game like the the full motion intro like the weird intersections where they had like sunny making eggs after every chapter oh. and the the install screen like oh, that game is like structurally one of the weirdest games and like in terms of especially triple yes. a games it's ever. so rare I mean, to it's, have it's also a metal gear game broken into levels which is like yeah odd, you know yeah and it's so weird to have a game that's so story focused but just so clearly there's dividing lines between act one act two act three act four it's like i really like personally i know it's the least 
<laughs> loved, but like I really liked Act 3 just for how weird it was and how much a Metal Gear Solid 3 is relevant for that. And I didn't mind the sneaking through prog stuff. I thought it was kind of cool and I thought it was the funniest thing in the world when the guy in the trench coat turns out to be a bunch of those hand robots <laughs> stacked on top of each other like a <laughs> Muppet man. But like, it's just yeah. so distinct that to be like, oh yeah, Act 2 or like, oh my God, Act 4, that insane flashback of Snake's yeah. dream. There's so much packed into that game, even if it is my... You know, it's number four on my list of Metal Gears. Ultimately, just because like I would hesitate. It's at the to go bottom through. of mine too. I yeah. like, I like, I love it, it. But it's 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 my least favorite Metal Gear Solid game. For sure. Right. When you go back and think about literally the hour and a half long cutscene at the end, and I was just screaming at my TV like, "You got your point across, Kojima. We got it." When it's like, "Don't you understand?" zero one must become zero but zero is still a number so zero cannot exist it's like yeah i got that concept but it's literally like 20 minutes of them explaining the fact that zero yeah. is still a number it's like i got it everybody <laughs> well, you see, mayans invented the contents of zero <laughs> uh, but yeah like I, I yeah it's such a like i don't think the story of that game is good but it is fascinating like yes. what they do with that game and i also feel like that had to be if it wasn't already there before like the kernel of like we this is not a sustainable way to make a game is like we built like <laughs> chapter three especially like yeah. we built all these like incredible environments and they look amazing and you're going to spend maybe like an hour in them and you can almost point to this game as like this is the start of where people thought let's just make open world games because they're a better use of resources than this uh where you like we spend so much time and budget on like what is this effectively like a six hour game right yes it yeah. is bonkers um and uh the the part that I always am fascinated by is that flashback at the start of Act 4. Um, and I remember visiting Kojima Productions and talking to Ken, who is the producer on that game, who went to school in Minneapolis, which was awesome. So his English was great. Um, but he was talking about the absurd amount of tech wizardry that went into recreating the PlayStation stuff for the start of the Shadow Moses chapter. Um, and he's like, that was an unbelievable amount of effort and he said that like we worked very closely with playstation like they actually brought some developers over like that was a real herculean task between konami and playstation working together just to like make that possible on the playstation 3 and so i'm sure they could brute force their way around it but i always wonder if that's one of the reasons why it's not getting re-released is just like whatever tech sure. was built out to make that happen was so tricky to bring forward but i don't know yeah I wonder if at this point it would be cleaner to just even just make a remake of that game, which would be weird yeah. to announce out of nowhere. But I could see it's either <laughs> going to be like original Metal Gear or Metal Gear Solid 4. It's just like we're just made Blue Point is making Metal Gear Solid 4 because <laughs> it's easier. Yeah. And then the flashback <laughs> is of Twin Snakes instead of the original. <laughs> like they got to do uh, it. Um, do yeah. you get anything out of four without playing the other ones, though, if they were to just remake only that one? Oh, my God. It's I such a oh. quote unquote conclusion. Yeah. I mean, was, it is I the mean, well, serial. You, it seems like you played. That's the first one you played. Did I misunderstand what you no, were saying? No, no, no. It was I, I played all the other ones leading up to it. Like, I remember. Oh, like, OK. OK. Gotcha. Yeah. But I would be curious to see what that is like just playing that game out of nowhere. But it, it was it was strange to see. I think it was last year or maybe the year before where they they put two and three i no, it was i think it was just two on good old games uh on yeah Dog. i think one as well one and two uh solo and then they just never followed up on that for whatever reason right so I'm, i'd be curious to see if they just end up releasing like at some point down the road when konami gets around to making games again they just end up releasing like remaster those games and then like here's a remake of four uh but i could also see it being konami and then never doing anything again i mean do yeah. you think in this world They're of... They're knocking away Silent Hill rumors. They got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. But in this world of everything coming back, does anybody want to say definitively that they are confident we will never see a continuing story that involves Solid Snake? Like, will we ever see canonical Solid Snake post Metal Gear Solid 4? Or is he just Captain America now for the MCU? Of just like, he's out there, I guess, but... I think we will. Honestly. You think at some point, for better or worse, I could I could even see Kojima doing it in some far flung future. You know what I mean? Like somehow Sony know. buys the rights, somebody buys the rights, and yeah. by, by twenty thirty, when Sony has yeah. bought Konami and just said we're just taking the property rights, you can keep the exercise stuff. Uh, 
and, and the, the pachinkos and then they just you know team up with uh Pla- or uh kojima productions which they've also bought and so now yeah. now it's like a sony owned property but yeah like yeah i also remember just like the podcast the fact that you had an ipod an ipod that you could listen to podcasts on while you were playing the game and you could so listen cool. to the kojima productions podcast which was one of my favorites that ryan payton hosted um yeah and you could listen to the making of the game within the game like that was peak Metal Gear solid 4 hype was just listening to every millisecond of that podcast of kojima productions and it was just the best oh good times um if you're really interested in the making of Metal Gear solid 4 um back at game informer i wrote a feature about that opening about the live action stuff and how they filmed those commercials and so it's really the only big feature i ever wrote but i think it's called channeling creativity like the opening of Metal Gear solid 4 and it's it's cool because we got you know we we're at kojima Productions, so we actually got to talk to to Ken, the producer and stuff, just about why they did that, how much it costs, how much Logan, the production company, busted their ass to make that happen just for the sake of this completely optional thing. It's not needed really in any way, but it's just the best. Um, Metal Gear Solid 4, what's better, what's better than that mm-hmm. other than those other three games? Just clones being dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I, that is a game I don't want to play at all, but I have nothing but love in my heart for. <laughs> you just watched Metal Gear Scanlan, right? Over at Giant Bomb? Yeah. yeah. That's got to be such a weird way to absorb that game. It was ideal, I think. <laughs> the commentary track. If you are sick of snark, clickbait, and an avalanche of movie news, you can help support independent games media by subscribing to MinMax's YouTube channel here or checking out the benefits over on Patreon. It's a nice, clean handshake. You support us, and we won't make dumb, condescending stuff for you. Your support helps us continue our mission of focusing on games, friends, and getting better. Patreon.com slash MinMax with two N's. We'd appreciate it.